Welcome back to Julianne Does Things. Today we are recapping Raw from July 11th, 2022, 7-11, which is free Slurpee day at 7-11. And again, I forgot and I didn't get one. So we started off Raw on 7-11 with Barack Lesnar, which was pretty funny because he came out and like I recognized his song and I was like, all right, Brock Lesnar's here. It's going to be hype. And then he came out and he did like his, I think it's like a scream or something and his pyro was supposed to go off, but the pyro was late. He like did his scream and it was like kind of funny because it was quiet and then his pyro came off like, I don't know, like five seconds later. And that's him pointing back at it. And he's like, it was late. It was late. But it seems like he was a good sport about it. So I appreciated that. I I like Brock. I heard there's like some stuff about him, like, you know, non-wrestling related. But I don't know enough about it to, you know, say anything. But uh, Brock entertains me. I guess that's the right thing to say. And look what he said. He said, Roman Reigns, you're a hog. And I slaughter hogs on my farm every single day, which, you know, I get what he's saying. And, you know, he's disrespecting my tribal chief. But like, I still kind of support Brock because, again, he entertains me. But like slaughtering hogs on his farm every single day, though, like when he said that, I was like, hmm, seems a bit <laughs> seems a bit wasteful, Brock. I don't know. How do you have a hog every day to slaughter? Maybe you gotta, you know, chill out on that. But yeah, so basically he said, you know, Roman Reigns has been chilling like a pig. Like he hasn't been around, which is true. Not the pig part, but he hasn't been around. And he's like, but you're not a pig, you're a hog and hogs get slaughtered is what he's saying. So he also called him a tribal hog, I'm pretty sure. And he said, the tribal hog is gonna get a country beep kicking at SummerSlam. And you know, I'm really hyped because I was really hyped for their match at WrestleMania and it got cut short because Roman got hurt, but I'm pretty excited for this one. I hope it's hype. I hope nothing goes wrong. You know, that shouldn't. And, you know, we get a nice solid last man standing match that lasts more than like five minutes. And so then uh, Paul Heyman comes out and like, I'm just getting this vibe that like Paul Heyman is low key a Brock stan because like he's always talking about like like last time right in the last recap he was like oh Brock's scary I'm scared he's like shaking in his boots but I guess he like explained it a little bit here so Paul said that you know with Roman he beats his opponents athletically you know as a wrestler but with Brock he annihilates people he puts them down for good he takes them out of action he conquers streaks like he did with the Undertaker he ends careers and so I was like okay so maybe Paul Heem is not like you know like a Brock Lesnar stan, but like he's definitely speaking facts, like Brock did do all those things. So I guess I understand, you know? And then he said like, basically saying like, he, like what he said last time, it's like Brock is scary, basically validating like how big of an opponent Brock is, but he's not scared that like Roman's gonna lose. It's more like he's scared of like what Roman's gonna become because Roman has to be a monster. And then he said this, which just made me laugh. He was like, if I have to train Roman Reigns to stick his hand up your ass and pull your heart out through that hole, that is what my tribal chief is going to do. And I just thought it was funny because when he talked, he like emphasized through that hole. And it just made me giggle, so I wanted to show you guys. But yeah, it seems like he's still like totally backing up Roman Reigns, but he's just acknowledging that Brock, like, you know, is a scary dude, basically. Um, and then Theory comes out. Theory doesn't cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase again, spoiler alert. But he comes out and he rolls this clip from when he got F5 from the top of the pod at elimination chamber and i remember this i remember it was hype and i was like you know what theory is such a good sport it added to my list of things i like about theory all right and so he's basically here and i don't know i guess i we got like two weeks till SummerSlam, and it seems like he's gonna come out like almost every episode just to be like i'm gonna cash it in a summer slam i'm gonna cash it in a summer slam and you know i want to believe him but now like because of how much like he's bringing it up i'm like what if he doesn't though i don't know but 
this really does make me think that what's gonna happen is Brock's gonna be Roman and then Theory's gonna cash in. And that's gonna be like the plan. Cause then it'll be like a callback to this and Theory doesn't really have anything to call back to with Roman Reigns. So it almost feels like it makes more sense to have the story go with Brock. And then Alpha Academy, com Alpha Academy comes out because you know, they're Theory's buddies now. And then Brock's like, oh, look at that. I come out and all the cockroaches come out. And so he fights um, Alpha Academy and he F5s Otis through the table which was crazy because it was like the show just started Brock but he did it he broke the table and honestly it was just really impressive that he was able to f5 Otis because Otis is so you know massive it's crazy and then next we have judgment they come out they came out because Finn has a singles match with Rey Mysterio and Damien and Dom are also around so they're there but it's only going to be Finn and Ray fighting and then right before commercials Damien hit this pose and I was like what is this pose it kind of like I don't know made me think like he was posing like I don't know like for the Avengers or for Power Rangers or something but Llama Boy pointed out that it's because he was supposed to be the archer of something so I looked it up and before Damien was, you know, doing this whole thing with Judgment Day. He was the Archer of Infamy, which I don't really understand what that means. But then I read more up on it and I guess it's because his character is supposed to have this like machismo rock star lifestyle. I don't understand what that has to do with being an Archer of Infamy. But, you know, that's his pose. You know, he's he's got a bow and arrow. And that's the thing. And you know what? I kind of like it. I'm not mad at it. I don't fully understand it, but I like that he has a gimmick because it's like something you can do. Like when I went to Raw, I wanted to cheer for Gunter, right? But like, this is all I could do. I wish that he had like some kind of hand gesture that I could do. And at least Damien has that. Maybe one day I'll cheer for Damien and I'll pull out, you know, my bow and arrow too. Who knows? Bring up some, uh, some Katniss Everdeen. Um, and so they start talking and Damien's talking to Dom, Finn's talking to Dom and basically they're still trying to recruit him. I thought it was kind of settled last week that Dominic is not going to join their little group here. But, you know, Damien talks to him and he's like, you're welcome to join it, man. And, you know, he's trying. He's trying and I do think like the Judgment Day promos are getting better i feel like they're not quite there yet but they are getting better i think this whole thing they have with the mysterios is doing pretty good for them um and then finn you know comes in with his line tranquilo tranquilo bilingual or trilingual king and he talks about how ray is a bad father which i don't like i don't know i just i don't think he needs to go that far you know but i guess you know ray's not even dominic's real dad so I don't know. I think he's doing pretty good. I don't think he's a bad father. I'll just say that. You never realized Mysterio was that small. I guess you're right. I mean, I guess like next to like Damien, he looks pretty small. But I also think Damien's just like really big because even Finn looks fairly small next to Damien. How tall is Damien? Probably like, I don't know, six something. Let's see. Let me look it up. How tall is Damien Priest? He's 6'5", so he's 6'5", and then Finn Balor is 5'11", so he's got like a whole six inches on him. And I think Ray's like 5'6", or 5'7", or something. But yeah. And so they have a little brawl, but then they get to their match, so it's just Finn and just Ray. And you know, they, I think they had a pretty even match. And the, with this one, this is actually the pin that ends up winning it, even though it's not the pin that I like. Finn ends up beating Ray like super fair and square after he hits the crazy like coup de gras move where he jumps off the top of the turnbuckle. Um, but yeah, even though it's not the pin I like, he still did it. It was a good match. Fair and square, no trickery, no chairs, no interruptions or distractions that I saw at least, which was like kind of like I didn't really like that Judgment Day kept doing that. So it was nice to see him just like win a fight fair and square. And honestly, I think it also helps the, I guess, argument for Dom to join them because now it's not like, oh, well, I don't want to join them because even if they win, they're just lying and cheating. You know, this was a fair and square fight. So. I don't know, I think it might be kind of fun if like Dominic 
leaves his dad and goes with Judgment Day. But I also like the fact that he's on a tag team with his dad. So I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted. But I guess Judgment Day is like getting a little better in my eyes is what I'm trying to say. And then next we have a Raw Women's Championship rematch between Bianca Belair and Carmella. But first, Becky's out here to say some stuff. And you know what? Becky's got the drip. Let me give you a bit closer look. I love it. It looks like something Seth would wear. It might be Seth's jacket, honestly. I feel like I've seen Seth in something similar, but it's cute. I like it. And so Becky is here and she's like, you know what? Um, Liv won money in the bank and she cashed it in and it's like winning the lottery. But I don't need to win the lottery because I show up and work for a paycheck every week. And I was like, you know what? You go, girl. You tell him. Also, I like your shoes. I like those platform shoes. I just like, you know, platform shoes in general. But she was like, you know, I should have had a rematch after, was it WrestleMania? Was that the one where she didn't get one? She's like, basically she's saying, you know, I lost the title match, but I should have given a rematch and WWE is making me jump through all these hoops. Why does Carmella get a rematch right away? And I didn't get my rematch. And so she's saying, you know what? I am laying down the law. I am demanding demanding a championship match at SummerSlam. She says, I don't care who wins, Bianca or Carmella, whoever wins, I want a championship match at SummerSlam. And no one like came out to make it officially official. She's just, you know, she's manifesting it. She is putting it out there, putting it out there to be manifested. And yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Like nobody made it official, but she's just here to watch and observe. I guess. And so we have the title rematch. And you know what? Carmella held her own. At uh, Money in the Bank, not going to lie, it did seem like she was kind of getting like... Well, first of all, I think she was like avoiding quite a bit of Bianca's hits. But, you know, she tried her best, but it kind of seemed like she was kind of getting stomped on. But this one, you know, I got to say it did look more even. And it even looked like at some points that she might even be able to you know, take the title from Bianca. It really looked like it. But um, like uh, Bianca even put her in the KOD, like she was up there and she got out of it. And I don't know if I've seen somebody else get out of it. I probably have, but I don't remember. But it was really impressive how she did it. And it looked cool. So, you know, I loved it. And then at some point, like Carmella starts walking out, kind of like how Miz did a couple weeks ago. And I was like, what's she doing? Is she just going to leave? And so she starts going out and Bianca follows her. But then while Bianca's out there, Becky starts talking to Bianca and like basically distracts her. And Bianca gets counted out. Bianca gets counted out and loses due to a count out. But I guess title transfers don't happen during count outs, even though it did happen on JB TV when Llama Boy took the title from Shrololin through a count out. But I guess in WWE rules, that doesn't work. So even though technically Carmella won, she does not get the title. And I don't know if she's going to have another like rematch or something, but basically Bianca's still the Raw Women's Champion, even though Carmella won by count out. But I'm still proud of my girl Carmella. And, you know, she also did get beat up after, you know, after the count out. I think she was just rubbing, you know, the win in Bianca's face. Um, and so she did end up getting the KOD on Carmella, but it's okay. She did her best and she did really good. We're proud of our girl, Mella. Can we get exclamation point Mella in the chat, please? Because homegirl is money. And then next we had Miss TV. Miss TV is here with special guest Champa. So Miz and Champa are supposed to have a handicap match two on ones against two on one against AJ Styles. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate it. She is money. She is money. It's even on her outfit. See, Mela is money. Uh, so Champa is here. And I I wrote down in my notes, I was like, you know what? Champa's kind of like 
a less feral butch you know he it's kind of similar to butch where they're kind of just like here like looking to beat up somebody but i feel like he's like a little bit more controlled than butch but he's here and he even talked he said you know what i'm here i'm looking to fight to get the opportunities and i want to be in the spotlight and who's good at commanding a crowd the miz and so he said that's why he's partnering up with the miz and speaking of the miz the miz is still in denial about logan paul logan paul does not want anything to do with the miz but the miz still thinks they're gonna be buddies once they see each other so i guess we'll see what happens with that i want to say it's supposed to be like a singles thing but if the miss is with champa does that mean that logan paul is gonna have a tag team partner too i don't know um but they do have a fight at SummerSlam, right is that confirmed i think it is and so AJ Styles comes out, calls Miz a coward, and of course still says he has tiny, tiny, tiny little balls. And then guess who comes out? Our boy Zeke comes out. Shout out to the Zeke freaks. And so he comes out and he says this line. He says, hey, I'm Ezekiel. I'm Elias' younger brother. If you put exclamation point Ezekiel in the chat, I think that line will show up. But I think that's his line. Cause like he said it the exact same way and he said it before and you know what I'm like super all for it I love it I'm a Zeke freak and so he says his line and he talks about how Elias used to tell him about AJ and how they had you know phenomenal matches and you know Elias was also obsessed and insistent that the Miz has tiny balls so Zeke is also in on these um you know tiny balls gimmick sorry Miz and so Zeke says that he talked to Adam Pierce to make it official that instead of a two-on-one handicap against AJ Styles, The Miz and Ciampa are now in a tag team match between them and AJ Styles and Ezekiel. So basically, Zeke is officially in this match. No longer handicap, just regular tag team. Um, and then what happens at the end of this match is the official calls a disqualification against Ciampa because he came in and started beating up AJ Styles when he wasn't tagged in. I think at this point, AJ Styles had Miz like his calf in some kind of lock. So then Ciampa came in to stop it. But then because he did that, they got disqualified. AJ Styles and Zeke win. But then like the commentator was saying that it was supposed to be a handicap match. So technically it should be okay that Ciampa's in there. But if I remember right, even if it is a handicap match, they do still have to tag in. So I don't know. I'm having, you know, I'm having some confusion with the rules on today's Raw. And honestly, I had some confusions on this week's SmackDown too. I think I'm... Uh, I don't know, not understanding the rules correctly or something. And so next we had some backstage action with Bobby and Riddle. And spoiler alert, Bobby and Riddle are going to be a tag team. Tag team against Seth and who is it? Seth and... Seth, Seth and Theory. So it's like four of my favorite dudes right now that are going to be in one match tag team against each other. So I'm already hype. And then like Riddle also referenced Stranger Things. He was like, hey, like I'm kind of scared of, you know, Vecna and Stranger Things, who I know is like the monster, but I haven't really kept up with Stranger Things. He's like, I'm scared. Do you want to watch it together? And Bobby's like, I already watched it, but, you know, I'll see you out there so that's what happened yeah the ridge holland exactly andrea someone explained that to me huh because <laughs> i don't understand how that happened either but i guess we'll talk about that tomorrow in the smackdown recap but i just i don't know i something's going on with the rules where i don't understand and i thought it was just me but then like the commentators during the ridge holland one was like i don't understand what's going on but i guess we'll go with it so i don't know maybe they're just bending the rules a little bit like you know, like how they bent Drew McIntyre's sword. That was so funny. And Appy pinned me in the chat. Enjoy your 100 J bucks. And so next we have a match brought to us by Paws of Fury, the legend of Hank. And I'll be honest. All right, look, 
first what was the first one it was minions right it was brought to us by minions and then it was brought to us by thor love and thunder and now we have brought to us by pause of fury and i'll be honest the advertising's working because now like i'm like itching to go to the movies and i like didn't go to the movies for so long and now i'm like you know maybe i should watch these movies maybe i should watch pause of fury i don't know what it's about but you know maybe hank's a cool dude and i can watch pause of fury so i also really want to watch thor love and thunder and it came out last week, so like there should be less people now. I'm pretty excited to watch it. I'll let you guys know how I like it. But we have the match brought here by Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. And it's a tag team match. And the first team is Asuka and Alexa Bliss. And the second team is Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop. And like, I don't want to be rude, <laughs> but like, I thought it was kind of funny that like Asuka had this like a main event match, no holes barred, like, you know, pretty hype match against Becky. And now she lost and now she's doing, you know, the match that, you know, Hulu probably cut out. It's like the, this is usually what Hulu cuts out, but yeah, I was like, hmm, what's like Asuka going to do now? But you know, this is what she's doing. She's in a tag team with Alexa Bliss and Alexa ends up pinning Nikki A.S.H. for the win. And it's been like a couple of weeks now where they reference how Alexa Bliss and Nikki A.S.H. used to be a tag team. So I guess that gives like some backstory to this rivalry. So it doesn't seem like they're just kind of thrown in, but I don't know what it is about it. Maybe just because I didn't see them as a tag team or what, but I don't really feel like a real rivalry between them. I mean, it's cool that they're fighting and I like it. I like that Dewdrop's back because I feel like Dewdrop was, I don't know, just doing like the the house shows for a little bit. Wait, doesn't Dewdrop have the 24 seven title? I don't know, but um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I just don't really have a connection to this rivalry, but it's still cool to see them fight, I think. And next, is this the final one? No, 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 this isn't the final one. Next we have, they said we were going to have a singles match between Angelo Dawkins and Jimmy Uso. All right. And so the Usos come out and I just wanted to show this again because I just can't get enough of like their little models. I think it's so cool and it looks so good. And it was so hype when they had their models, like with the Roman model too. I don't know. I just think it's really cool. And but then, OK, so after they came in like this, right, they went to commercials and then after commercials, it turned into a six man tag team match between the Street Profits and R-Truth and the Usos and Omas. And I was really confused what was going on. But I guess during the commercial break, Adam Pierce came out and made it official that, you know, this is now a six man tag team match. And they did put like what we missed during the commercial break on YouTube. So we'll watch that after the recap and see what went down. Um, and so they have their match. At some point, Omos throws R-Truth at the apron and MVP's there too, also by the way. And he's like, who's the giant? Who's the giant? And Omos is like, I'm the giant. And you know, I just took this picture of that just cause I thought it was really funny. I thought it was just like a cute, you know, silly moment of like, who's the giant? I'm the giant. Yeah, so I wanted to point that out to you guys in case you missed it. And then R-Truth also had like his like John Cena moment, you know, you can't see me thing. I thought that was cute as well. And Omas ends up securing the win for the Usos. And I just want to say personally, I like this match and I think it did more for like Omas and R-Truth than it really did for like the Street Profits and Usos rivalry for me um and I thought it was really good. I think it gave them like a time to shine in a match that like would have my attention normally whereas like I think if they just had their own match one it would probably get cut by Hulu and two like I might not be as interested but like putting them in with the Street Profits and the Usos I think was a good idea because it gave them and they I feel like they did like a lot of like when I was watching this match a lot of what I was looking at was mostly Omas and R-Truth anyways so I think it was cool. It gave them their time to shine. I like that we're seeing our truth more in the ring instead of just, you know, backstage with the 24 seven crew. So yeah, I appreciated it. And then next we have 
some backstage action with Seth freaking Rollins, who I heard might change his name once the WWE is TV 14, which I'm still confused. Is it like SmackDown and Raw are going to be TV 14 or is it just going to be Raw? Because I feel like they've been advertising it mostly for Raw, but is it both? And they're also on different um, networks. So I wonder if that also makes a difference. I don't know. But Seth is here talking to Kevin Patrick, who is back to being an interviewer instead of being a commentator like he was last week. And Seth says he doesn't like Zeke, you know, no matter what his name is, whether he's Ezekiel, Elias, Elrod, Elmo, whatever. He doesn't care. And he also doesn't like Riddle. He feels like Riddle is just chasing clout off of his best bro, Randy. And he doesn't want to give Riddle clout from Seth freaking Rollins. Speaking of Riddle though, it is time for their match. They have a tag team match today and this was the main event match and it's Bobby Lashley and Riddle versus Theory and Seth freaking Rollins. And like I said earlier, these are like my four favorite dudes. And even if I didn't say it, you guys probably already know, you know how much I love Lil Riddle, Bobby, Theory and Seth. I already knew it was gonna be lit. I already knew I was gonna love it. I knew it. And then when Riddle came out, his animals were chubby unicorns, AKA rhinoceroses. And maybe because they're chubby unicorns, they couldn't really get up that fast. This was like the best picture I could take, but you know, we had rhinos today. We had rhinos. Um, and so they have their match and it kind of seems like Bobby and Riddle are killing it. They're kind of taking over Seth and Theory, you know? But then we had an interruption, which I didn't see coming. I don't know, did you guys see it coming? Cause we had an interruption and it was none other than Dolph Ziggler. And they were like, it's Dolph Ziggler, he's back. And I was like, what do you mean he's back? <laughs> like, He's been back. Cause it kind of seemed like they were saying like he's back from his stint at NXT, which he had like, I think it was like right before WrestleMania where he was like, you know, regularly on NXT. They're like, he's back, but he's come back a few times. And even like recently, like he came back, uh, I forgot what was going on, but like Omos and MVP were there and they were walking back and then Dolph Ziggler was there. But I guess he's officially back. He doesn't say anything. He just comes in and he goes to sit down by the commentary. So basically at ringside, he's just chilling there and we don't know what he's doing there. And then back to the match. At some point, Riddle was like on top of the turnbuckle up in this corner over here and Theory pulls his foot and then Riddle hits his balls on the turnbuckle or the TV, the corner TVs. I'm not sure what, but he hits something. And I think this is for reals because he like grabs it and he's like, I think he like mouths, you know, the F word. So I think he actually got hurt. So, you know, I hope he's OK. But the visionary sees this and he uses this opportunity to do this like crazy inverted super duper super plex. It's crazy because it was like it was like upside down and backwards. Then he threw Riddle down and it was crazy and it looked really cool. And I thought that was it for Riddle, but it wasn't because Riddle was still able to get up and get started on the Randy three on theory. This is the second part of the Randy three, I believe. And so he does this, but he was not able to get a straight shot of the Randy three. He wasn't able to get the RKO right away because Seth ends up pulling theory from the ring to to save him from Riddle, but as he's, you know, at ringside with Theory, Bobby comes out of nowhere and spears Seth through the barricade, which means that Theory went back into the ring and he tries to get this like dirty pin on Riddle. And I was like, oh my God, that's how they're gonna win. Theory and Seth are gonna win. But then Dolph comes in and knocks Theory's feet off which gives an opening to Riddle to land the RKO, finish the Randy three on Theory, pin him and get the win, baby. So Riddle and Bobby Lashley end up winning this match with some help from Dolph Ziggler, which I'm still not sure what he's doing. And they go to celebrate and like Riddle, like, you know, pats Bobby in the chest, like, yeah, you know, like celebratory thing. And then when Bobby does it to Riddle, Riddle like falls over. Cause you know, Bobby's so strong. I thought that was like, 
you know, a cute little detail, but they're still buddies. This was after he got knocked down. They're still buddies. He doesn't start any fight or anything. But back in the ring, Dolph is still beating up Theory. I'm not sure what his deal is with Theory, but he lands this like super kick, they said, on Theory. But it was like, I don't know, it was like a super duper super kick or something. It looks special. Uh, but he's back and maybe he's like Theory's new rival. It's like Theory's new Bobby. Maybe Theory can leave Bobby alone and now it's Dolph Ziggler. I don't know. Because I guess before he came in and did that kick, it, I almost felt like maybe Dolph was going to be like another manager or something. Like be someone's spokesperson. I don't know, but it looks like he has like some personal beef with Theory. I'm not sure what it is, but that was it. That was Raw from 7-11, July 11th, 2022. We are two weeks out from SummerSlam. We'll see what happens there. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and follow me on Twitch. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Julian does things, what she gonna do next? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Julian does things, what she gonna do next? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know.